Hello viewers, SuperGT here. I have a very interesting video for you today. Very, very interesting. Now, my original plan was quite simple. I just wanted to win a race in the Peugeot. Quite a simple matter. And I've recorded a fair few videos like that where you try to beat the fastest car, the R8 being the fastest car in this occasion, as you can see. But it took a very different direction during recording. And that direction was fairly dark and deep. And it all revolves around the person who's directly in front of me there, Momos91, a name which many of you will be familiar with. And in, in fact, I've actually been familiar with him because I've raced him many times. He's actually a very fast driver. And I've had a lot of clean races with him. But of course, there's another side of the story where You've seen the amount of videos being made on this guy. And it's not always a positive story when it comes to Momos91, our good friend here. So we'll see how this one slowly develops over the course of this race. So of course, in the Peugeot, up against the Audi R8, starting in 6th place, it's going to be really difficult. You've got the likes of RC Snake starting on pole position. It's going to be almost impossible to try to win unless there's a big five car pile up full of Audi R8s. It's not really feasible, but we can do our best. We do have, of course, Momos91 to try to get past, which can be a tricky proposition, but we will do our best with Peugeot power. Now it was during the Interlagos race last week where I actually saw the real actual upsides of this car. It was actually a very easy to control car and definitely not as quick as the Audi, definitely not as quick, but uh, still a solid choice. And if you can stick in the slipstream, then you're okay. Now this is where things begin to go downhill. Okay, I'm in the slipstream, and you can see I'm gaining. I put it over to the left-hand side. I, I've got the inside. It moves across a little bit, but okay. Then here, just completely turns in, and then drives off the track, and I get a penalty. And this is where we can begin to analyze exactly what is going on inside Momo's mind because I'm not sure it's all positive at all in fact it's re it really isn't up the inside he goes or I go sorry he moves over to the left hand side a little bit and okay that was a little bit late but not really too bad he turns in basically as if I'm not there he meets the apex he's basically just forgot that I'm there or I say forgot but he's just basically just not really respect respected the space of someone on his inside and at that point there, he could easily stay on the track, but he deliberately drives off, knowing that there was contact, and then that's going to give me a penalty. And this is not a an isolated incident. If you look at Zocker, 1990, a German YouTuber, makes Grand Tourism Sport videos, he had pretty much exactly the same incident, or a very similar incident, with Momos. In fact, this one is worse. This one is actually way worse. Look in the mirror. That's Momos. This guy's in the lead, Zocker. Momos drives to the back of him and then deliberately drives off the track. There's no way that he was going to do that anyway. But that's purely deliberate to get this guy a penalty. And honestly, it's, it's utterly contemptible and shameful behaviour. And it's something that R4M doesn't stand for. So someone's paid, someone's paid the hit and I'm quite happy to oblige and carry out the assassination. So, thanks to R4M. 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 That's what justice feels like. Call 0800 567 7944 for amazing ramming service. Thank you, welcome back. Thank you to that message from our sponsors. So, if anyone needs top ramming service, please do call R4M for a no ram, no fee guarantee. We will take out your opponents. No questions asked. And on this occasion, it's actually worked so well because I didn't get a penalty. I, well, I'm above that now. You saw my Forza video the other day. I can slam people off and just not get penalties for it somehow. Don't know how that works. Probably just by bribing the judges. I suppose R4M, just the way it works. Someone pays me and then I pay a cut of that to bribe the stewards so I don't get penalties quite simple really 
and unfortunately I still do have to of course serve the three seconds that Momo's gave us and that's going to hand us a big drop in positions going down and in fact past a Peugeot, Peugeot goes through so we've got another Peugeot to try and beat so down to ninth place at this point here, it was in fifth down to ninth, can we go about getting maybe it's going to be hard to get uh, a few positions for him. Maybe we can just catch up with this Peugeot and be the best of the two Peugeots. There is the group ahead of the, uh, the cart, the cart, the three cars uh, that I was just ahead of before the penalty. But here, is it really a matter of just trying to get onto the tail of this guy? Uh, one second behind, of course, we all know the magical suck zone of eight tenths. And I just need to gain about two tenths and then I'm there. So let's see if I can go about doing that through the first sector some plenty of kerb and a bit of grass in fact to hook the car around so the Peugeot compared to the R8 I mean the R8 is just so good mid corner you can really just it just slides around the corners a tiny bit and that means you can get on the throttle a lot earlier it turns very well and you can get on the throttle early as long as you can control the slide then you've got a really good cornering and accelerating car and that's why it's so good around most tracks when tyre wear isn't a factor. Tyre wear does affect the car quite a lot but when tyre wear isn't a factor as it is in Daily Race B here or as it isn't in Daily Race B then uh, the R8 is, is very very good. The Porsche sorry the Porsche, the Peugeot here not quite not quite a Porsche but a Peugeot is decent um, in the R8 I can get into the 59s 159s normally. In this car at best you're looking at a very low 2 minutes Maybe in the slipstream you can get below um, two minutes, but uh, this this car is at least a couple of attempts off per lap, maybe more, maybe half a second. So you're always going to be hard pressed to try to win a race up against a load of R8, especially in a high class lobby. But I have definitely caught the back of this guy, um, only by about two attempts. But I'm just on the cusp of the slipstream. So we need to have a good turn one and two here. Very difficult corner. And I found that not really applying the brakes fully actually helps. So you're still turning while braking, but just make sure you don't put down the brakes completely all the way. Um, well, maybe straight away, but then uh, quite quickly release the brake and it kind of goes around there a little bit better. So, onto the back of this guy. Uh, the group of three ahead, still ahead by quite a way, and there's not really much chance of trying to catch them up. I'm not sure what's happened to Momo, I'm presuming that he has left the race because there are only 14 players remaining and the race always starts with 16 or normally should start with 16 I think this one did so two people have left Momo's perhaps being one of them so coming through the right kink into the hairpin and that's a good run, we've hit the apex very nicely and this is where the slipstream really begins to count on this lap. Coming out of the hairpin, you've got three long straights. Well, you've got one here coming out of Spoon, one after Spoon, and then normally you've got the main straight as well. But obviously, on the, on the final lap, you only have that main straight, so two on this occasion. So there's one of them done through Spoon. Have to get a good run here, and then you've got two overtaking opportunities in the slipstream, and then into 130R or into the chicane at the very end of the lap. And here, I've definitely got a run in the slipstream, he's swerving all over the place, doesn't know which side to go. He covers to the right hand side, which is no real strong defence. And I'm firmly up the inside, meet the apex, and get the job done. He's actually a little bit wide there, and I was worried about getting a penalty. I'm pretty sure I left him a lot of space, and I met the apex, I didn't turn in too late. So we come through to finish eighth, top Peugeot, if that's any consolation. And only in eighth position, not great. Could have finished fifth ideally but uh, R8s there you can see there top five dominated by the Audi Audi team big shout out to the Audi boys back in the factory for the top notch work they've done all weekend but we go again and we can see here Momo's in fact actually Momo's he did leave and he's actually yeah he's actually bottled his rating so his rating on that account has gone completely out of the window but he returns he comes back from the ashes. He's back on his other account. I don't know how many accounts he has. I think he has three. But he's back. 
and I'm back as well with some sly little dig messages at him. So he didn't actually reply to this, but um, just trying to psych him out, play the mental mind games. Let's see if that works. Okay, starting fourth place this time, a little bit higher up, and we don't have RC Snake, so there's actually maybe a vague chance of winning. But Momo's, the Momo's experience takes another step into race number two here at Suzuka in group three. Let's see how it goes. Into turn one. Again, three Audi R8s ahead. A big, big group of R8s. Very difficult to try to make your way through. Normally, when you start fighting, uh, you begin to lose ground to other people. So, coming through from fourth is always going to be really hard. Especially in a four lap race, it's not very long to try and get the job done. You do have to be very quick about it. And in fact, qualifying. Half the game is qualifying in these daily races, in daily race A, daily race B, especially daily race B, qualifying is half of the matter really. Once you've got a good qualifying lap, then you're almost golden. So we've got the Italian here, getting a little bit squirmy, coming out of Degna 1, regains control before Degna 2, and we're all still in the slipstream. I don't think, I'm not, I'm not sure if Momo's quite in the slipstream with the lead, I think he might just be on the edge of it probably isn't now actually he's probably just dropped out so coming down the back straights towards spoon curve it's always quite difficult on the attack and on the defense as well the Italian goes for the move on Momos there's contact as they go through spoon and he's just run him out and he's uh, kind of got two wheel dragged along the edge of the curb and that's going to spin him out so Momos drops down immediately so that's one major threat immediately gone. I was surprised he didn't drive off the track and get uh, get this guy a penalty given his past experiences of him given our past experience of him so I was thinking about the move there I wasn't really quite alongside at best half alongside so I felt like to play the long game usually they'll still turn in on you there and risk you'd risk both having an accident or getting a penalty we'll play the long game try to win this or at least get second as the leader's already gone. He's two seconds ahead, which is going to be almost impossible to try to regain in a Peugeot with no slipstream. As the Italian goes very wide, very easy to do here. Good racing between the two of us. And I feel as though I give him space as we just go through a bit of contact on the exit. I mean, he could have easily just drove, driven off, but he isn't Momo's, so he's actually a good guy, this guy. So up into second place, 2.6 seconds away from the leader. But this is a good result. In the Peugeot, up against the R8, it's never going to be easy to try and beat as many of them as you can. But on this occasion, we're sitting in a good place, but we still, of course, have two and a half laps left. Can't get too complacent at this point, as the R8 is going to be very strong, especially in our slipstream coming down uh, the back straights after the hairpin. So I really divide this track into two halves. Uh, so the start line... Oh, sorry, from the first corner to here is all the twisty stuff. And then from here to the first corner is mostly straight, separated by a few corners. And it's normally always the best overtaking opportunities this half of the lap. So into Spoon, normally not the best place to do it, but um, you can still do it there. The problem with doing it there is that the person can just slipstream you back into 130R and you just both lose time. If the move's on, then I suppose something might as well go for it. Trying to break the slipstream as early as possible. Sticking to one side, moving to one side, moving to the left-hand side as quickly as possible. He's not actually moved over completely, he actually touched the grass. Because I'm trying to get over to the left so much. This is going to have to be a defensive move into the chicane as he's right on his hour, as you can see. Breaking on the, about 125 metres before the corner is not quite early enough. But it's actually good enough on this occasion. As the Italian goes way too deep. And unfortunately for him, he's been sent to the Momo's realm, which is not a good place to be. Suboptimal place to be, I would say. And he's going to have his work cut out to try to have a decent, clean race from here to the end. So for me now, I'm two seconds ahead of third, four and a half seconds away from first. So I'm pretty much in no man's land. Although that can be ideal. That can be an ideal situation. You just bring it home to the end basically 
in this situation, there's not much point in pushing a huge amount, taking massive risks. You know, if your wheels are on the edge of the curb, just lift off and make sure you don't get the auto spin, which has been happening a fair few times around here. So by the end of the race, the leader 6.5 seconds ahead. He really dominated this one. But there's a yellow flag. And that normally spells something positive. As we come through into the chicane, he's completely bottled it. If you thought I was a bottle job, this guy's completely bottled it from a certain victory. And I'm going to come through in the Peugeot to win the race. I don't know how that happened. We will take a look at the replay. But Peugeot Master Race, there it is. There's proof. Peugeot is the best car. That's all you need. You don't need the Audi R8. Peugeot, RCZ, that's what it's all about. And Momo's there finishing in third place. So, interesting antics. Let's take a look at the replay, shall we? As uh, there's plenty, di uh, plenty to digest in that race. Here was the overtake. And he, it was, to be fair, it was actually quite a late move from the Italian. Just pushed him onto the edge of the curb. And his, his wheels kind of got stuck. It was like a train on rails. Couldn't really get off of them. And uh, that's how Momo's met his fate in this race. And he dropped right down. This is lap two, so a lap later. And then the German ahead spins out. So he um, got kind of caught. And then this is where the Italian went around my outsider, went very deep and entered the Momo's realm. And Momo's actually went up a position here. So I was just wondering what went on there. Let's see, let's see what happened here exactly, because I covered the inside. He was very close, could have gone for the move, I just covered it. And I guess he got distracted, plus one of the brake boards was knocked over, so that might have distracted him. This was later in the, in the race, lap uh, number four. So Momo's moving to the right, moving back to the left. They're moving back to the right very late and getting on the brakes very early. Um, questionable defence, on the limit of what is allowed, really. But um, I've seen worse, but it's still not great driving as uh, this is what happened to the leader then so he's he got he kind of got his uh, wheel caught as well met a similar fate to what Momo's did on lap one and completely spun out and unfortunately for him his car faced the wall and that could have been crucial in fact it was crucial because I just went through if he got away half a second earlier away from that wall he would have won the race but he didn't because R4M paid to bribe this race and make it go in my favor so this guy actually got bribed but anyway i do hope you enjoyed the video as always let me know your thoughts i shall see you next time thank you so much for the support as always follow on instagram follow on twitter for more juicy content and i'll see you next time thanks so much for watching goodbye